I'm just a fake silhouette Avoiding every threat I wanna stay like a Hey, Internet friends. Yesterday on Friday, July 31st, 2020, President Trump announced he will move swiftly to ban the Chinese-owned app called TikTok from the great U.S. of A. And curiously, this news came out around the same time that Microsoft was having talks to buy TikTok from its Chinese owner, ByteDance. But amid rumors of Microsoft's acquisition, Trump was insistent that he would not let an American firm buy the operation. The response to this TikTok ban has been mixed between outcries that TikTok users and K-pop fans took credit for registering potentially hundreds of thousands of tickets for Trump's Tulsa, Oklahoma rally back in June, and the result was a somewhat lower rally attendance than expected. Meanwhile, other individuals have voiced support for this ban because the app is a national security threat, and it's like walking around with malware in your hand. Not only has the app been caught blocking Hong Kong freedom protests, but it's also been caught using people's mics and cameras while they were just browsing through the content and tracking their keyboard strokes even though they were not using the app. So since the claim is that China is using the app to spy on US citizens, it's a good move to ban it. Basically, it's in the best interest of Americans to ban the app, is the sentiment. India recently banned TikTok over security concerns, and it appears that Japan is about to follow suit as well. To be fair here, your smartphone is always spying on you. You know, Google's Alphabet Inc. and DARPA's Frankenstein Incarnation Facebook? They've been spying on you and collecting data on you this entire time. There are backdoors in your phone and all of your devices. Facebook collects so much data on you and the people in your life that even those who don't use Facebook have shadow profiles built for them, just based off the information collected from your account. And these social media outlets frequently debate about policing thoughts and anticipating potential crimes based on the behavioral patterns and conversations of their users. My point is, the United States government has a direct line to the private information of its citizens. And you best believe that information will be used against you should you step out of line. When China has this data on US citizens, it not only poses a threat to national security, but it also gives them bargaining power or trade value should the United States want that information. The year is 2020, and China is our boogeyman of the hour, not any other countries who spy on the United States. In ByteDance, TikTok's parent company was founded by Zhang Yiming, and he's accused of communist party links. So you know what that means. You got a big bad commie spying on you through your screen like a little pariah. I guess the question here becomes, who would you rather spy on you, the United States or that country across the pond? Would you like me to shoot you in the left foot or would you like me to shoot you in the right foot? Uh, well, it's not like you have a choice unless you throw your smartphone into oncoming traffic and even then it's kind of touch and go. Y'all know my position on social media and privacy. I've been saying it for years and I sound like a broken record. I believe we've been complicit in the annihilation of our own privacy. We had a chance to defend it, but we chose convenience and entertainment instead. The majority of people's children will never have that opportunity. They'll never have a choice or even the expectation of privacy. With big tech not only creating information databases on us, but also genetic databases on us through Google Own 23 and Me as well as Ancestry DNA and other genetic testing firms. You know, those DNA tests that were so popular and a ton of people spit in a tube and shipped off the most unique thing about them. Big tech and those for-profit DNA companies turned around and sold the most unique thing about us to third parties. And who the heck knows what happened after that because we all just spit in a tube and we're so amused by the results, right? Just the way, same way we were so amused by uploading all our family photo albums to Facebook. This was my position before this scandemic happened. I used to think that people by and large had fully accepted that their personal data and DNA was no longer their own. And that when all of that information was compiled in a single huge database, folks could be ranked in a social credit system based on worth. But now I'm seeing a different picture emerge. Well, I don't want commies spying on me any more than the next person. I feel like privacy concerns shifting to TikTok right now are largely a distraction. Because right now, we're knee deep in the new war on terror as we face the invisible enemy, germs. Back in March, Facebook, Microsoft, TikTok, and several other tech companies partnered with the World Health Organization to find software solutions for challenges related to the coronavirus pandemic. 
you know, solutions for contact tracing and the movement of people as it relates to the spread of the virus. As a side note, it's curious that now Bill Gates' Microsoft is trying to buy TikTok, which, among other things, would give them access to a younger demographic and potential database, given that Bill Gates has been the figurehead of the scandemic and the solutions for the virus, which have been vaccines, masks, and lockdowns. Oh, and now goggles. We can't forget goggles, too. At the same time that Trump announced the banning of TikTok for national security reasons, and Microsoft was rumored to be in negotiations with TikTok, the World Economic Forum introduced a new phone application into the mix as a possible solution for the viral spread. While contact tracing apps have been released worldwide, they're having a hard time getting traction because the download isn't mandatory. And they haven't met the numbers for participation to effectively trace anybody and everybody's movement due to privacy concerns. As you know, global travel and large events have been severely limited by the scandemic. But for every modern problem, there's a modern solution. Well, an orchestrated problem, predictable reaction, and manufactured solution. Enter COVID Pass. I'm gonna read right off their press release so I make sure I get this right. COVID Pass is the brainchild of one of the World Economic Forum's young global leaders, Mustafa Makas. Ma uh, uh, Ma we're gonna go with Makas. This app uses blockchain technology to store encrypted data from individual blood tests, allowing users to prove that they have tested negative for COVID-19. Mockass hopes his app, which is launching in September, will become a standardized solution for airlines, airports, and border agencies, and will eliminate quarantine for healthy travelers. COVID Pass would also allow hotels, cinemas, theaters, and sporting and concert venues to reopen safely. The way this is gonna work is travelers will have their blood screened at an approved COVID Pass laboratory before being issued with a secure QR help visa code via their phone, which they can present at airline check-ins, borders, and event entrances. As to ensure that only non-infectious people will travel and participate in group events. So, you know, they could finally end the lockdown if only we would download this app and comply. What's that? You don't wanna download this invasive application? You don't want to forfeit your freedoms? Well, I guess you just want to genocide old people, kill the tourism industry, and make airlines suffer. I'll never tell you what to do on my channel, but good lord, let's stop and think for a moment. Theoretically, you could contract a virus five minutes after you take a blood test at the COVID Pass laboratory. And besides, the tests look for the presence of any corona antibodies in the bloodstream. So you very well could test positive and not be sick or germy at all. Yet your freedom to travel and gather is limited by a very flawed something built on a total lie and will inevitably be used as a means to collect your DNA. These apps are voluntary now, but this whole scandemic thing has no end in sight. Because like I said, this is the new war on terrorism and the invisible enemy is germs. People are forfeiting their freedoms and their privacy out of fear and with big tech solutions for these scary problems, you can rest assured that the inevitable result of this technology will be to limit and imprison you if you do not comply. Just imagine a future where you will be notified by text because you've brushed against someone who tested positive and you must self-quarantine, otherwise your digital bill of health will be tarnished, perhaps even suspended. Sure, your digital certificate might be used at first to allow you to fly and see your mom or, you know, go to a baseball game or something, but where does it end? Will it be used to get into the grocery store or used so that your children can attend school? Just download the app so the government can control you. That's what they want. They want you to beg for your own enslavement. So internet friends, what do you think about Trump banning TikTok? Do you think it was a good move or are you like me and think, yeah, sure, great move, but it's all a distraction because no matter what, more and more of our privacy and freedoms are being taken from us in exchange for entertainment, convenience, and compliance. I mean, is living under medical tyranny and on the surveillance grid everything you thought it would be and more? Let me know. I always look forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye!